Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. One student is dead after two people opened fire at a Colorado school. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you what investigators are focusing on to determine the motive. Potholes are plaguing many places across Gallatin County. This one here on Durston Road is just a big one. I'm Cody Boyer, listening to the concerns of those living nearby. Egg deployers. That's exactly what Something those along are. those lines or car swallowers. Exactly. Oh boy, we'll get to that story here in a moment. It is 6.30 here on your Wednesday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. And our top story for you here, at least one teenager is dead. Eight others are injured after two students opened fire at a Colorado school less than 10 minutes from Columbine. The authorities say 18-year-old Devin Erickson is one of the suspects in custody. The other is a juvenile who has not been identified. CBS's Laura Podesta has the latest. School buses dropped off students at a rec center after a deadly shooting at their suburban Denver school yesterday. I just want to see him. Um, I, if he comes, I want him to see me. They were reunited with their parents shortly thereafter. I said, what's going on? Tommy Bash was texting with her daughter Mia during the attack. It's a real lockdown, Mom. There's shootings. And well, we heard like really big bangs, which I assume are gunshots. And then we also heard like some screaming and stuff like that. 18-year-old Kendrick Castillo, a student at STEM school Highlands Ranch, was killed. According to the first shooter, the second shooter is still on the loose. Authorities say two students opened fire on two classrooms. This is a terrible event. This is something that, that no one wants to have happen in their community. Officers arrived within two minutes. We did struggle with the suspects to take them into custody and they are in custody. The K through 12 STEM school is home to 1800 students with seniors preparing to graduate this week. Not the thing you expect the last three days of your high school that have happened. Michael Schwartz says his friend Lucas went after one of the shooters. With his help, a couple of other kids were able to pin him to the ground, but because of that, he just got shot a lot more than everyone else. Investigators searched one of the suspects' homes yesterday evening as they tried to determine a motive. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, Laura tells us at least one of the suspects will be in court later today. That school is closed for the rest of the week. The 33rd school shooting this year. Since August of last year, yep. Just staggering there. Yeah. Matt, tell us something happy. Mm, all right. Well, let's <laughs> talk about some milder temperatures right over on. the weekend. It's actually not bad out there into the morning. Uh, beautiful shots there. You look at how things are uh, kind of rolling through here. I do expect to see some milder temperatures once again today, uh, mainly dealing with some cool temperatures early on into the 40s. Uh, not particularly cold, but you look at a few showers trying to pass through our skies early this morning. It looks like it's going to be hit and miss rain showers packed the umbrella on the way out the door. Temperatures holding into the 50s. And good news is we've got warmer temperatures <coughs> on the way, especially in time for Mother's Day weekend. We're going to break down your complete forecast, of course, in just a few minutes. Coming up on 633 and it's time to talk results. School elections were held yesterday and voters chose school board members to decide that if they wanted to raise some of their school taxes as well. Yeah, we're going to start with some of those school board races in Butte. Kelly Lee, the top vote getter with 35%. Uh, she takes uh, one of the two open seats. The race closer for the second seat, Quentin Queer uh, wins with uh, wins that one with 33% of the vote. But Christina Zimple just 136 votes back with 32%. And in Bozeman, the incumbents easily won re-election to the school board. Tanya Reinhart received 45% of the vote to keep her seat. Board chair Andrew Willette got 40% and also won re-election. Gary McGowan was a distant third out of the race with just 15 percent. Down the road in Belgrade, two newcomers will join the board. Steve Garvert was the top vote getter with 30 percent. He was followed by Holly Murray with 27 percent. She's new to the board, but her husband has served in the past. Incumbent D. Beatty keeps his seat with 24 percent of the vote. Out of the running in that race was Renee Matamo with 19 percent. And in the Montforton School District near Bozeman, there's an interesting race where two candidates are separated by just one vote. Brett Megard won one of the two seats with 26 percent of the vote. For now, these unofficial results give the second seat to Amy Free with 22 percent by just one vote over Sarah Baumgartner. And just another reminder that these are preliminary unofficial results from the Gallatin County Clerk's uh, Office. The fully canvassed official numbers 
won't be out uh, until a later date. Uh, there are, of course, results in other trustee races and in-school levy races. You can see those on the bottom of your screen right here uh, through the end of Montana this morning. You can also check out those numbers anytime by simply visiting our websites. And the body of a missing Butte man has been recovered from the Missouri River. 73-year-old Ronald Lowney was reported missing on April 10th on Sunday. The Broadwater County Search and Rescue Team pulled his body out of the river near the Tostin Dam. Gallatin County Coroner says the cause of death was drowning. And uh, we're following up on the Butte teenager we told you about last month uh, was uh, fighting for a lifelong battle with cystic fibrosis. Bridget Mallow passed away Sunday in her Butte home at the age of 15 from cystic fibrosis, an incurable respiratory disease. She was able to attend a celebration of life party on April 27th that was attended by hundreds of people. Oh, so sad. Governor Steve Bullock signed 26 bills into law yesterday in a quick ceremony at the state capitol. MTN's Mike Dennison was there and tells us about several notable bills that are now law. Signing 26 bills in less than an hour is almost like an assembly line, but that didn't detract from the satisfaction and fun for bill sponsors and supporters who packed the governor's conference room to be part of the ceremony. Among the bills signed Tuesday are a pair sponsored by State Representative Shane Morjo of Missoula and others to help victims of child sexual abuse seek justice against their abusers or prevent it from happening in the first place. House Bill 640 increases the amount of time after the crime that victims of child sex molestation can sue their abusers for damages. And House Bill 173 essentially makes it illegal for teachers to have sexual relations with any student in 12th grade or lower. Supporters of both bills came to the ceremony on Tuesday. Bullock also signed a bill extending income tax credits for the cost of film production in Montana. It was joined by many members of the filmmaking community. And he signed the bill that increases funding for state parks by increasing the vehicle registration fee for parks from $6 to $9, a bill sponsored by Senator Terry Gothier of Helena. The bill signing ceremonies for the governor are far from over. He's planning another big one on Thursday for health care related bills, including the bill continuing Montana's $700 million a year Medicaid expansion program. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now Mike tells us the governor also has a number of other major bills on his desk still waiting to be signed. And while Governor Steve Bullock signed all those laws, as of yesterday, he also vetoed eight bills by sponsoring all of the ones by Republicans. Now, those bills included giving tax credits to certain businesses to make new hires, a bill supported by GOP leaders as a key economic development measure. Now, the tax credit bill was sponsored by Republican Senator Mark Blasdell of Kalispell. It created credit for up to 10 years for businesses that hire at least 10 new employees with at least $45,000 a year in salary and, and as well as benefits. Now, in his veto measure, Message. Bullock said that the credit would reward growth at the, for the largest employers while not helping those smaller employers. Blasdell told MTN News that the governor's staff had suggested the 10-job thre threshold after his original bill had a lower number. That bill was estimated to cost the state treasury about a million dollars a year. Bullock also vetoed a bill that would ban sanctuary cities in Montana, a bill creating penalties for violating free speech on Montana campuses, and another bill that gave counties a veto power over relocation of wild bison. Now, veto by the governor essentially kills that bill. Shifting gears now here at 638. This is the season for potholes, but there's one on Bozeman's west side that's causing some major headaches. That's right. It is the pothole with that location, and it's the drivers that are speeding through it causing all the problems. MTN's Cody Boyer has the story. Now, if you've driven into town along Durston near Gooch Hill Road, you've either seen or felt this pothole, which upon measuring it is about five feet across. That is almost the entire right hand lane. And those living nearby say it has only grown with semi trailers and cars speeding through here daily. One man who lives right next to the hole says as it grows, so does his concern. It's always amazing to sit and watch. It's more fun than watching TV sometimes to see people go through that and how they navigate it. When it comes to potholes, the Durston pothole is a whopper. I've kind of monitored it over the past uh, month or so and it has continued to grow in size. Kent Simonson lives at the mouth of the curve where the pothole sits, causing drivers to either drive through it or swerve around it, both options that make him nervous. Due to the location right at the curve and uh, people swerving into the other lane, 
uh, there is some uh, serious concern that I have of somebody careening off the road and hitting my building. Other cars slowed down and tried to drive through it, which on occasion has its own consequences. That car scraped the bottom. Depending on oncoming traffic, I'll usually navigate around it. Otherwise, I just slow down enough to go through it. The warning signs nearby are a relieving sight to others, showing that maintenance should be happening soon. Kent says the sooner, the better. I'd like to see it fixed. I'd like to see it fixed soon. I think it is a safety hazard to drivers in the area, especially uh, considering that the road doesn't have anywhere to go off to the sides. I did also speak to the county road department. They did tell me that this road is one of many across the entire Gallatin County that is scheduled to get some help. They did add that while this one has caused some complaints to be called in, road repairs are not prioritized and crews have to go road by road, area by area, where it makes sense to use resources. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. So we'll be following up on that one a little Take bit. Take it slow, people. Take, Take it, it slow. slow. And preferably don't swerve into a building or the other lane. That's what we've good, learned from good, that package. Good choices for sure. Yes, so. yes. Thank you for that, Cody. It is time for a quick break.